thank you all so much for joining. As you know, this is um, a virtual job shadow event with Bird's Eye um, Building and Design Company. And this is actually the third in our series that we've been running this winter and into the spring. Um, just to highlight some of the different trades companies in the area, some of the different jobs um, that you know are in the construction, trades, all those types of careers. So thank you so much for joining today. Um, so our host is Mary Simmons. She is the marketing and communications director at Bird's Eye. And then our host, which you will, or our tour guide, I guess, um, which you'll see in a moment is John Yates. And he's the project manager at the site that we'll be virtually touring. Um, so Mary, would you like to kick things off? Oh, you're still on mute. <laughs> Perfect. Sorry. IT issues, everybody. My name is Mary Simmons. I am and the uh, marketing manager at Bird's Eye. And uh, Bird's Eye was established in 1984, and we are currently um, we have a design studio as well as a building company that includes an extensive wood shop, uh, site works, uh, metal works, and property services. Um, Bird's Eye is a little bit unique in that um, we design homes that we don't end up building. We build homes that we didn't design. And we also design homes that we do end up building. So this project is um, on the corner of Cliff and Willard in Burlington. Man, man, many of you may have driven by it at one time or another. This is a project that Bird's Eye did design originally, but we did not build the main house. Um, about a year after it was built, it was sold and the new owners decided to add an, an addition, which is what you see behind me. Um, so the addition was designed by Bird's Eye and is being built by Bird's Eye. So, um, and uh, yeah, I guess as far as background goes, we can get into more of that in the Q&A. But um, for the time being, I'll introduce my colleague, John Yates who's a project manager and has been the lead on this project. And uh, he's gonna give us a little tour. Thank you, Mary. Sure. So where are we? Hi, everyone. There we go. Um, welcome to our uh, Burlington project. This is our bridge edition. Um, so we started here in the spring um, with foundation and I guess our first uh, mission was to take the architectural plans, take the um, structural plans, and we needed to compare what those plans showed with what we, the points that we needed to hit. So back in the spring, when nothing's here and we're looking at landing a foundation 40 feet away from the existing house, those elevations are, are crucial um, because they tie in with the upper level, which lands on a band of windows at the existing house and a band of windows on the addition. So one tool that we use a lot is coming up with a story pole, which is a way to record all these elevations. So we can mark elevations in the field. We can then compare them with ele elevations in the plans. Um, and then if those elevations need to change, we can um, communicate that to everybody involved. Um, so we, we work carefully through those elevations. Uh, we did some work with setting up uh, mocking up details and um, yeah, just making sure we had everything figured out as they got ready to pour the foundation. Um, the other thing we did right off the bat was gather as much information as we could from all the players involved. So plumbers, electrician, uh, data, concrete, steel, what do they need to do their job well? And then we take all that information and then make sure that it works for design and it works for us. And in some ways it was uh, on the far end there, there's a bathroom. So there's a lot of plumbing that needs to get through that band of windows. Um, and we had to figure out a way to make that happen and not take away from the design of looking like the 
bridge is floating on the um, on the structure. So coming up with a list of all these pipes and power and coming up with a chase way for everything to move through um, and figuring that out ahead of time so that once you have concrete and steel, um, you don't have to try and figure out a way out of it at that point. So, um, so those were our initial moves. And then once we had uh, concrete and steel towards the end of summer, uh, then we jumped into the framing um, and we were framing late summer, fall. Uh, we got a roof on right before the winter, which felt really good. Um, and then we've been working through rough in through the winter. And right now we're, um, we've got drywall hung, we're taping drywall and we're getting ready to move into all of our finishes. Um, we've got a, a hard deadline of, um, they're gonna be living here for the beginning of the summer. So um, we've got everything lined up uh, to finish strong, so. Great. Yeah, so uh, we can do a tour of the inside. All right, awesome. Hey, you, you tell me what the picture looks like. Looks great. Here. Oh, yeah. Nice. Good? Yeah, okay. Good. Okay. Um, so let's face this way okay. for a second. Um, so in, in talking about, um, you know, gathering information during the concrete phase, one thing that was really important is there's step lights and there's a door and windows that go into this concrete. There's also all of the footings for the steel posts. So gathering that information, coming up with templates, we built a wood frame for this unit. Um, so we need to know rough openings, finished dimensions, and then we're building something to hold the place in the concrete forms that we then removed after uh, the pour. So um, just making sure that those things are dialed in because it would be really hard to change afterwards. <laughs> um, okay. Hi, Dave. Hi. Uh, I, I am familiar with this project and have been involved. Um, mm -hmm. My name is Nate. I'm a, um, a senior project manager. And so if we're waiting, it looks like maybe they're online, but I could answer some questions in the meantime. Surrounded by concrete here. <laughs> Let's try, Dave. They're, they're headed up the stairs. Uh, it might be a little bit better um, coverage up that up at the top. Yeah. There. Um, or I wonder out on the the open balcony maybe too. Yeah. Um, upstairs, there's drywall going on. You can see someone on stilts. Can you, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yep. Good. Okay. So you can hear me and see me, right? Yes, we can. You're just a little little uh fuzzy but it's okay okay uh, so upstairs we are taping drywall we are installing interior doors um which then have drywall returns where uh bear is standing gets removed this is temporary flooring and the idea is that when you're standing down in the foundation um Everything above you is open. The majority is open. Um, and there'll be a chandelier up here. There's a walkway. Um, right here is the glass wall. And then this becomes workspace. Uh, so we're taping drywalls. We'll do uh, primer, uh, primer and paint next week. And then we move into flooring. Um, and then we've got baseboard and then we'll bring the plumbers and electricians back to trim everything out. Right. I guess we can talk about these. Okay. So um, one thing we did here was we wanted to hide the uh, heat and AC source. So we built these access panels. Uh, 
that are removable so that you could do maintenance or service on the unit. So behind these access panels are the heat and AC uh, mini split units. So they use this ductwork, um, but they're out of sight. So all you see is ductwork access panel, um, which is a nice clean look. Uh, Out on the balcony, uh, Jesse's finishing up the siding. Um, so that is, we're closing in on it. One nice detail here is we have this roof canopy, um, which gives this rectangle frame of the sky, which is really nice. And it it's really a cool look from down below um, when you get to see the overall shape and then you can see right through and, uh, you see the trees in the background and um, the sky, blue sky behind it. Awesome. Uh, Mary, can we get a view of that upper part? Oh, yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. So, one thing that I was going to uh, talk about down in the foundation, um, but this is also in line with it, is with the shop doors and these details where. Um, you know, you're really designing these details in the field. Uh, the drawings take it to a certain point, but then you need to think about where your finish ends up and then every level back. So when we were looking at the shop door in the, in the first level that has to do with the stairs, there's one point in the corner that is super important because the stair stringer is coming down everything hits that one point on the door. So when we're planning that out, we're working with the wood shop to design that door. Um, those measurements are crucial. And uh, the best way that we found to do that is by mocking it up um, with installing boards that fit those uh, planes and then using story poles to draw everything out. And once you do that, and you build, build your mock-up or you build your story pole, that's something that you can keep. So when they come to spray foam and you wanna pull that off so it doesn't get damaged, we save it so that that's our way to communicate with everybody else rather than uh, through a verbal communication or through writing, you can say, look, this is what we built and this goes right here. And it really helps to uh, streamline that communication. So. It happened with the shop door down there. It also happened with this roof canopy because we need to hit some very important points here. I guess the most important and trickiest point was right uh, behind Bear here is that point. Um, and we needed to think about that back in the framing. And then you've got framing, sheathing, We've got a rain screen behind this, which is a you know quarter inch space that uh, water and moisture can breathe behind the siding. Um, so just thinking about all of those layers and we mocked up every corner because we want to make sure that our layout works out in the field. Um, and this point was crucial. And then making sure that all of this canopy comes in over the windows. So doing the, doing the subtraction there to think, well, I, I have to subtract the siding, I have to subtract the underlayment, I have to subtract the sheathing um, so that we hit these points. Um, and, and uh, you know, we thought about it a lot and then ultimately you really figure it out when you mock it up with the actual materials. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's our project. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Going to a slightly quieter place. All right. For the Q and A. Perfect. You want to just sit down? Sure. Yeah. So the plan is, um, I just have a couple of questions for John that will help kind of elaborate some of the things you're talking about, and then I'm happy to open it up to. The audience for the last couple of minutes to ask some questions. Um, but John, I was hoping you could just 
tell us a little bit more about how you personally got started at Bird's Eye um, yeah. and kind of what, what led you to the role that you're in today. Yep. Um, so I started building when I was um, younger. My father was a builder and I just always really liked it. I always liked being on the job site. Um, and I worked at another building company before Bird's Eye and it was two owners. And when they decided to each start their own company, they said, you can pick which side you want to go with. And I thought, now seems a really good time to not choose one, but think about where I really want to be um, in my career. So I did a lot of research and I said, I just want a foot in the door with the best building company in Vermont. Um, so I did a lot of did a lot of research and uh, I, I felt that Bird's Eye had a lot of resources to offer. Um, like what Bear said, you know, we have site works, architecture, wood shop, metal work. Um, if there's something that I'm not sure about, there's somebody at Bird's Eye that has the answer to it. Um, so that was really valuable to me. Um, the projects we do are very custom and there's a lot of figuring out. A lot of stuff that we do hasn't been done before. It's the first go through it. So uh, a lot of problem solving and, and communication with everybody involved. And I really like that um, aspect of it. So um, I yeah. talked with, with Nate and uh, started here about, uh, four years ago, I believe, um, and doing a lot of carpentry and overseeing uh, smaller jobs and um, yeah. Great. Um, you kind of elaborated on this a little bit for, but for folks who are maybe interested in getting into a career in the building trades, yep. um, what kind of prior experience, education skills is kind of necessary to get an entry level job in, in a career like yours? Yeah, I would say the most important thing is trying to build your foundation of knowledge of the basics. And I think that, I guess I can speak for building, but I think this is probably true in anything that once you decide you wanna do something, you're probably going to end up putting a lot of your own energy into figuring things out. So I, I did and still put a lot of time on my own um, just trying to figure out how things are done. And if I have a project coming up and there's something that I haven't done before, I do research on my own to try and see what other people do. Um, so I would say, you know, books are a great resource. Also, the uh, internet is an incredible resource because you can watch watch building companies build houses and you can see all this stuff. And, um, you know, J JLC, um, Journal of Light Construction is a really good resource mm -hmm. to just get, get background knowledge and foundational knowledge so that when you are on the job site and something comes up like uh, framing or installing doors or something like that, you, you have a good idea of what the, what it should look like um, and the, the concept, so. Yeah. Yeah. That's similar to in our previous job shadow with Timber Homes Vermont. Uh, yeah. One of the women there, she commented on how when she started, she had very little experience in construction or building. And so she was just getting her hands on any type of material or magazines or journals that she could read just to kind of get a, a background knowledge so that when somebody asked her to do something, she kind of knew what they were talking about. And so, yeah, I think that that's definitely drawing a parallel there. Um, I was also hoping you could talk a little bit about what kind of a typical day is like for you on the job. Obviously, it probably depends on the site you're working on, but I was yeah. wondering if you could elaborate on that a little bit. Sure. Um... So for my role on this project, um, I think it's it's very important for me that you know I, I'm here 
before the day starts, um, making sure that everything's in line. Uh, to start the day, I touch base with everyone um, to go over their plan for the day, see if they have any questions. I kind of uh, ask them how they're going to go about their project and then um, see if there's anything we need to uh, tweak in their process. Um, I then uh, take some time to look at the week ahead and make sure we have all of our materials, make sure we have all the details that we need figured out, um, gather that information and then try and um, either order materials or get architectural details into designs uh, hands so that we can start working through some of this stuff so that it doesn't hold us up. Um, I try to do some carpentry when, when I can. Um, and so I, I like to jump in and uh, I guess I have found that right now because my days are, uh, I have a lot of stuff coming in from electricians, plumbers, uh, network, design, if I can take something off of somebody's hands where it's, let me cut all this blocking and put this in um, so that, you know, Dave can put his head 100% into those stairs because they are really involved. Um, that seems to work pretty well. So um, I try to do some of that. And then uh, just, just really trying to stay one step ahead of everything so that everything is lined up and moving, moving smoothly. And then communicating with all of the players constantly so that when it comes time for we need the electricians here, we've been talking for months about this stuff. And this is the date, just checking back in. This is now the date um, so that everybody feels good that they had full warning. And then at the end of the day, um, I like to touch base with everybody again um, to see how their projects are progressing, um, see if anything came up, do some quality control. Uh, and then I also like to give them a idea of, okay, so tomorrow you're going to continue working on this, or this is your project tomorrow. This is what we need to complete by the end of the week. And then show everyone how that fits into the grand scheme of our overall schedule to stay on track um, so that they can see big picture how their project fits in with that. Yeah. So it kind of seems like just putting all the pieces together and making sure that everything's going in kind of a stepwise process. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then just my final question for you, um, maybe before I open it up, is just maybe you can talk about a, a little bit about what the company culture is like at Bird's Eye and what maybe in your opinion makes Bird's Eye a unique place to work. Yep. Uh, company culture is probably my favorite thing about Bird's Eye. And that is because everybody here is here to do a really good job and they really care about what they're doing. And, um, you know, Bear talked about earlier that we are um, I think you did, right? The employee owned? I didn't. Oh, okay. Well, Bird's Eye is a ESOP. So we're an employee owned company. Um, so what that means is uh, every year that you work at Bird's Eye, you get shares in, in Bird's Eye stock. And the, the better the Bird's Eye stock is, the better that works out for you. And so everybody here really cares about the uh, legacy of the company. Um, and it shows in the work that we do every day. Um, the other side of that is work-life balance is really important at Bird's Eye. And we do four long days. So we have, for the most part, a three-day weekend. And the majority of people here are doing something outside. They're skiing or biking or um, hiking. Um, Everybody seems to really embrace the, we come in, we do a really good job. And then we also play hard. And um, the outdoor seems to be uh, a really big part of that, so. Yeah, great. Well, thanks for uh, answering all those questions. 